Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, May 17th. Also, before I get started, I want to show you some parts and tools that a YouTuber sent me. And especially what I like are the steel adjusting tools. Well, actually one of them is a limiter cap puller here. And here it is, it's part number 5910-890-4500A. And here's the tip. And the next tool is a little adjusting tool. It's part number 5910-890-2307. It's a four millimeter socket tip here, as you can see. And the other tool is just a regular flat little screwdriver to adjust carburetors with. Now he wanted me to let you guys know that these tools are listed on ebay.com. What I'll do is put the link under this video so you guys can buy it. This one here, I'm not sure if it is a little screwdriver, but there is a third tool, which is a limiter cap puller, I believe. Anyways, I'll put the three links in case you guys want to go get those tools. Here's a quick look at some of the parts he actually sent me. He sent me some actual chains, 14-inch chains, which are commonly used. Here's another 14-inch Husqvarna chain, and there's actually a 16-inch chain over here. There's a bunch of goodies in this bag here, primer bulbs, carb kits, and here's a small Tecumseh part that's handy to have around. What it is is a carburetor nozzle tube, and it's part number 640080. This is the small emulsion tube that goes inside the lawnmower carburetors. They are a sacrificial part, and sometimes when you remove them, they do break. And by the way, this is the small tube where two small O-rings attach to it. Oftentimes, if your lawnmower doesn't run properly, you need to replace the two small O-rings on that tube. And sometimes when you remove the tube, it will break, so it's handy to have a spare one. They're only a few bucks, but they can sure get you out of a jam. And it's funny that he sent me this part. I did not ask for it, but I do need one today. So it's just kind of ironic that I got it at this time. Here's a Tecumseh carb kit. Here's some primer bulbs. Anyway, here's a K20 watt kit. This is a very common kit that's used. This is good to keep in stock. And here's the primer valve that goes inside small two-cycle carburetors. By the way, it's part 176-64-1. Sometimes if your primer bulb doesn't work, you can replace this valve and it may work after that. And in here are miscellaneous parts for Briggs and Stratton engines. There's a lot of intake gaskets and different things like that. And also, not only did he send me the parts, but also his son was part of this. His name is Harold. He's called Little Man. I'll assume that Harold is mechanically inclined as well. He seems to like watching my videos, and I want to thank him for that. Also, his father, I think, is showing him how to repair small engines as well. So it's always nice to see when a young lad is interested in doing something good like this. And a big thank you goes out to Harold and Jacob for sending out these parts. Also, I want to show you guys a bunch of parts I got from DiscountOnlineParts.com and here it is. I also received a few cooler bottles like this which I'm going to randomly give out to some of my viewers. Anyways, I got a chain combo like this from Oregon. It's part number 109118 and it fits Dalmar, Husqvarna, Johns Red, Makita and Shindaiwa. And here's the specs on the bar and the chain. This is actually the lighter version of the Oregon bar. The professional one is Power Match, but this is a really good bar and chain combo. The chain is very, very sharp. If you get one of these for your saw, you will not be disappointed. And I also got a bunch of inline fuel filters like this. Here's some white ones. Here's a red one. The difference in the colors of these filters are the microns inside. I got some blade adapters here for AYP lawnmowers, which are usually craftsmen. And I got a bunch of floats like this, which replace the Tecumseh floats. It replaces this part number here, 632019, and these are excellent floats. As you guys know, it's hard to get the brass floats from Tecumseh, but these here do a good job. I've used many of these in the past, and I'm very happy with them. I also got a gasket scraper like this one, and it's part 42-446-0. I also got a bunch of K10 watt kits from Walbro, a bunch of spark plugs. These RC12YC plugs you will use on a lot of lawnmowers and lawn tractors. A bunch of terminal connectors for ignition switches on lawn tractors and also the plastic cases that the terminals go in. These plug on to your ignition switch. And I also got a 10 pack of these gaskets here. 
They're originally part number 272653 from Briggs. These little gaskets go between the air breather assembly and the carburetor on Briggs & Stratton Quantum lawnmower engines. They're really handy to have around because if this gasket is damaged, the primer on your Quantum Briggs engine may not work properly. I also got a few Oregon rim sprockets, 3 8 by 7. And the thing I was anxious to get was the magnetic blade balancer. It's actually made in Italy. It's really good quality. It's a Tecomec. And it's Oregon part number 42-047 if you want to go buy one on discountonlineparts.com. And it's a wall mount magnetic blade balancer. I will make a tool review video to show you guys how to use this thing. Actually, John from Discount Online Parts just emailed me telling me that the first 10 who go to his website and use the code DONNYBOY73 at checkout will get a 10% discount on their purchase. So hurry up and go to discountonlineparts.com, put in your order, and make sure to use the DONNYBOY73 code at checkout. Also, you can call them via this toll-free number over here. Some people have seen my 10 inch grinder here and they ask me what do I use this for? Well mostly I use it to sharpen lawnmower blades. It's a 1 horsepower engine, it's 120 volts and this grinder does not slow down at all when you're sharpening anything. It's a lot more money than a 6 or 8 inch grinder but it's well worth it. I bought this on Kijiji, it's a local classified here on the internet. So that way I got it much cheaper than if I bought it brand new. Sometimes YouTubers ask me why doesn't my mower have spark? It did last year when I put it away, but this year it doesn't. What I'm showing you here, I'm assuming that your spark plug's good. All I'm going to show you is to make sure that when this lever is down, that the cable's working properly. When you depress this lever here, it moves a mechanism here at the engine allowing your spark plug to have spark. So if your cable's damaged, you might notice that these parts are not retracting the way they should. Specifically, if this part here doesn't retract far enough this way, you're not going to have spark at your spark plug and your lawnmower will never start. So it's always important to double check the safety cable. You can spray some lube inside the cable from here and from the handlebars to make it easier to use. These cables are fairly cheap. They're usually under $20 and I do have a few videos that show how to replace these on a few different lawnmowers. And what I'll do is have a link under the video today so you can go check to see how it's done. And usually the part number is stamped right on the cable, so it makes it easier to get the next one. Another question I get sometimes is, does it matter if I put shorter blades on my lawn tractor than what's already on it? Well, the answer to that is definitely yes, it will matter. You should always replace your blades with an exact blade or an exact replacement blade, so it can be an aftermarket blade that's good as well. On this tractor here, they had the old blade I'm showing you here, and as you can see, compared to the correct blade, it's quite a bit shorter. I've lined up the two blades here, and as you can see at the other end, there's a full inch of difference. Now on these tractors, there's two blades, so you're going to end up with two inches of difference, which is a lot. What that means is you're going to end up with a large gap between both blades on the tractor. What would happen is you would end up with a large gap between both blades on the deck and you'd end up with a line of grass on your lawn that isn't cut. It would definitely be an annoyance. You would have to drive back over the parts of the lawn that weren't cut and if you did forget to do that, your lawn would kind of look dumb because you'd have some grass sticking up all over the place. And if you look underneath now with both correct blades, you can see there's a lot less space between each of them. There's probably only a quarter inch of space in between both blades as opposed to having two inches if you had the wrong blades like I showed you earlier. And also your blades are going to come much closer to the edge of the deck all inside. So it's going to keep the deck a bit cleaner and also you're going to get the full cut. So again, this is just a quick tip. Whether you replace the blades or somebody else, make sure that they use the proper blades. Another question I often get asked in regards to this specific saw here, the steel MS-180C and the MS-170. Is there an adjuster to adjust the bar oil going to the chain on these saws? Well, my answer to this is no. There's no adjuster whatsoever. It's non-adjustable. The only time you're going to get an adjustment on the chainsaw for the bar oil is when you start getting in the bigger saws. Basically, the amount of oil that this saw is putting out for the barn chain is what you have to live with unless you do your own specific modifications to it. 
I've heard of people drilling out the small hole that feeds oil to the bar a bit larger and they say that helped a bit. I haven't done it myself, but if you have, leave your comment below. I'm sure everybody else would appreciate that. Also some people I've seen my impact here in my shop and some people have asked me do I like it? Well the answer is yes. It's a cordless 18 volt Milwaukee quarter inch drive impact. And I can tell you that it's very handy. I keep telling myself why didn't I get one of these a lot sooner. And I also got the 18 volt drill. It was a combo actually when I bought them at Home Depot. So you will be seeing a tool review video soon on these two tools. A YouTuber asked me the other day, will my chainsaw last just as long if I use aftermarket parts when I rebuild the cylinder, piston, and rings? Well, my answer to that is no. Unless you use a really good name brand like Tecomec and maybe some other people have some other brands in their countries that are just as good as OEM. But from my experience, the aftermarket kits do not last as long. Now here's a typical aftermarket kit. This is for Steel 026. And like I said, from experience, I do know that they don't last as long. If you want them to last longer, you might want to get one that's Nicosil coated. There is a difference in price, but it's well worth it. And also, like I mentioned, if you get a Tecomec kit, which are made in Italy, they're really good kits that I know about. If you're rebuilding the saw just for yourself and you're just going to use it a few times a year or not too heavily, it's probably worth it for you because if you buy an OEM kit, it's going to be sometimes three times the price and it makes it not even worth rebuilding the saw. Personally, if I had a saw that I only used a few times a year, this is the way I would go. But if you have a saw that you're going to use a lot and you want it to last and be reliable, then I would get an OEM top end. If you get an OEM, usually it's going to have the OEM manufacturer's markings on it like you see here. It says steel. And here's the Husqvarna cylinder and you can see here the company that made this one. It says Mall, and that's a really good company because you will find most of their cylinders on OEM equipment. Also if you're in the business of repairing small engines you may want to give your customers the option as well. They can choose between a cheap aftermarket kit, a good aftermarket kit too as well, or go OEM. Again, you'll have to explain to them the difference in cost and why. And also make sure to tell them that the kit may not last as long as an OEM kit. If you don't tell them you're putting an aftermarket kit and it blows up on them, they're just going to think that you did a bad job. For example, this is a brand new block and top end for an MS-180C from Steel. So to give you an example, let's say it costs $200 for this part here and you can buy a new saw for $279. Well, I strongly recommend that you don't bother fixing it, just go buy a new saw. Not only in that case will you have a brand new saw, but you will also have a lot of spare parts left to go around. And another question I often get asked is, what kind of oil should I use in my lawnmower? Well, what I have here is some Castrol HD30. It's an SAE30 motor oil. This is a nice thick summer oil and it is recommended in outdoor power equipment. Again, look at your manual first before you put any oil in your engine. You don't specifically have to buy this brand, but any SAE30 oil will do. Somebody asked me the other day, if you lose the limiter caps here on the adjusting screws, will your carburetor go out of adjustment? Well, in this case here, the answer would be no, because the screws are spring-loaded. As you can see, these springs add tension to the screws, so they do not go out of adjustment. The limiter caps here serve two purposes. They first of all prevent people from adjusting their carburetors, and second of all, they do help to keep the screws in their right adjustment. And here's a closer look at the springs. So there's quite a little length of spring there on each screw. So that's the answer to that question. If you have any more information, please post your comment under the video. So that'll be it for today's Q&A. Make sure to check out the links under the video today. Have yourselves a great weekend, and you can see me in my next Q&A in two weeks.